Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome to Holy Hell Hope. My name is Annie, and I hope that this channel will usually be a source of, of wisdom and uh, maybe some humor, some thought-provoking questions, all that good stuff. But because tarot cards are my medium, and all of the, the YouTube tarot readers are into politics, I've really been itching to get in on that in terms of, of just engaging with this group of people who are very admirably working together to try to make, to actually and proactively make sense of all of the surreal changes being made to our country over time, um, so much of which is coming from the Trump administration, but moreover, the zeitgeist, the, you know, the collective psychology of the Trump, uh, the Trump supporters. So I've decided that political readings will have this nice red, uh, red placemat coloration and that my inspiration for these, these readings will be the Mad Hatter character. So, uh, this is from, I think, Through the Looking Glass. This is apparently a chromoscope. Um, I thought that was fairly apt because apparently you can go back in time to look at the past, but you can't relive it or recreate it, even though they would certainly like to do so. Um, the reason the Mad Hatter is a symbol to me for Trump supporters uh, is because Hatter's uh, hatters were driven mad over time by the mercury poisoning, but the mercury was such an important part of their day-to-day -day job that uh, that they were exposed over time to a toxic environment and their minds and hearts were twisted. So, you know, metaphor. <laughs> but specifically, I would like here to ask uh, a particular question, which is how lucid is... Donald J. Trump uh, today. Uh, incidentally, this is the Deviant Moon Tarot deck, borderless edition, uh, created by Patrick Valenza. Um, I had been wondering if there was a perfect deck uh, to tackle the the twistedness of politics today. And when I discovered the Deviant Moon deck, I realized that it made me cringe. And yet still caught my imagination. <laughs> so I'm planning on using this deck on just about any any subject that matter that is that is twisted. I've also got a protector in this little black tourmaline dog named Grim, and uh, and also a a cleansing inspiration in this selenite palm stone. So let's do this. The question is, how lucid is Donald Trump? Why do I ask? Because yesterday, he, or earlier this week, he took a photograph with a two-month-old orphan, and he threw up the thumbs up, and he grinned like an idiot. And of course, plenty of pundits mused that he has no empathy, that he was, you know, he's so self-absorbed that he was caught up in the fact that people there were supporters of his, and, and just didn't remembered, wasn't mindful of the overarching point of the trip, which is that the baby was an orphan because tragedy, right? So, the president of the freaking United States of America throws a thumbs up and a big cheesy grin, and I wonder to myself, how, how lucid is he? How consistently aware of reality is he? And there are multiple factors that a lot of folks may forget or overlook. Obviously, we have just the the clear evidence on his Twitter feed that the man is, well, at the very, very least, we begin with unconventional, right? Everything he has done and said and been has been unprecedented. So you got the unconventionality. But additionally you have the possibility that he has some serious psychological disorders. Uh, there's that book, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. 27 psychiatrists and mental health experts assess a president. In fairness to them, they did not diagnose him. 
But because of the recent DSM-5 establishing standards for diagnosis that can be based on objective observation rather than subjective self-reporting of the individual, blah, blah, blah. The point is, is that they assessed what kind of psychological pathologies, what kind of frameworks he fit into. And George Conway, the husband of presidential aide uh, Con Helly Killianne Conway, uh, has... <laughs> has mused publicly that he may be diagnosable as uh, a malignant narcissist, which is a personality disorder, and antisocial personality disorder, which is sociopathy. That's right. Uh, the theory is that Donald Trump is a malignant narcissist and a sociopath. Plausible? Absolutely. Additionally, I don't know if y'all saw this, but back in December of 2018, there was a crew member from The Apprentice, uh, somewhere in between the, like, 2004 beginning of the show and, and I guess, 20, I don't know, 10, 12, somewhere. There was a crew member uh, who said, hey, by the way, man used to love to snore his Adderall. And for whatever it can be worth, Tom Arnold who, while definitely a C-list celebrity, celebrity is at least a public figure. So, to whatever credibility you want to give Tom Arnold, uh, he backed up this, uh, this claim of the crew member, and he specifically alleged that Trump was a speed freak who, quote, crushes up his Adderall, and he sniffs it because he can't read, so he gets really nervous when he has to read cue cards. So... Uh, incidentally, some of the side effects of snorting Adderall can include uh, dry mouth and sniffing. Uh, gosh, Trump does an awful lot of sniffing when he's when he's given the speeches where he has to read off the teleprompter. Maybe maybe he gets a little a little nervous with the reading. Maybe maybe he he does a lot of sniffing. Um, but thirdly, we can't do to forget that his father, Fred Trump Sr. Uh, died after uh, struggling with Alzheimer's for six years. And late onset for Alzheimer's is 65. So uh, Donald J. Trump has quite a genetic predisposition for Alzheimer's. He may or may not have diagnosable personality disorders. And uh, there are reasons to suspect that he may have been or currently is a drug addict. So... The point of that story is, dude's falling apart. This isn't news to any of us. We feel like, damn it, how does he manage to reach a new low? We didn't even know that a lower existed. We had never seen lower than this in terms of societal standards, and yet he stoops always lower. So we've, we've noted the deterioration and people have theorized that he is a, a hateful, um, sadistic sociopath who delights in cruelty. Maybe, maybe not. I, but I theorize that more often than not, as of now, so after three years of, after all of, of his, <laughs> all of his, uh, you know, genetic medical dispositions, all of his um, personal psychology, then adding on to that that the last three years or so of pressure in terms of being expected to actually get his shit together and actually run the goddamn country, despite the fact that he's refused to do that responsible running of the country, doesn't mean he hasn't been under pressure. So, dude has been... Um, it's gotten It's gotten worse. Is, is my theory. I think it's gotten worse. So I just wanted to, I suppose in my inaugural political rant and read video, I wanted to ask the question, how lucid is he? Um, regardless of, of the specifics of why he may or may not be disconnected from reality, um, is my does my theory hold? So is he... Does he grin with the thumbs up because he doesn't care that the baby has been orphaned by a white supremacist urged to hate all Hispanics by Trump himself? Does he grin because 
he doesn't care about the horrifying implications of the photo or is he genuinely not aware of it? Not just stupid, there's also that factor. We can never forget that factor. But it doesn't do to pick one of these assessments and just go with it. Say he's losing his mind or he's stupid or he is being manipulated by other people or like, all of these things could be true at the same time. So let's ask simply, how lucid is he? Incidentally, the Deviant Moon tarot deck, at least this version is a little bit tricky to shuffle because it is about a centimeter and a half longer than most other cards. And I have small hands. And there it is. <clears throat> Holy ones and spirit folk, please come close by me and lend me your wisdom and your insight. Help me to see clearly uh, a truth that is helpful to me or to any, any person who may view this video helpful in terms of um, making our shared reality a little more coherent. Please help us to gain a, perhaps a little peace of mind through gained, uh, through increased clarity. Um, amen. Is Donald Trump lucid? How, how cognizant is he of his surroundings generally? Um, you know, how much in command of himself is he when he trails off in, in conversation Okay, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. When he trails off in conversation and uh, and just gets kind of caught up in the enjoyment of being a celebrity and having... I mean, in fairness, the baby's uncle, the baby's dad, had been fans. Um, so he did have a young, young man standing there enthusiastic. Um, so maybe he just got caught up in, in the the joyfulness of it, but also this is a card about overindulgence. Um, you know, three people raising their glasses together, partying a little too hard. So this could be suggesting he has chemical, um, chemical elements in play. The issue at hand is the Queen of Pentacles. Uh, now the Queen is always the sustainer of the element of the suit, meaning that the Queen of Pentacles sustains the material security. So, in terms of trying to keep himself under control, keeping his body, his body in control, his thought processes in his control, for him to be aware of his surroundings and have a good grip on things is the challenge. Underlying concern here is the cherry. It's that compulsive nature. It's the fact that Donald Trump just has to say something. He will always fill the silence. He, he, that's why he repeats himself. He, it's why he relies on, um, you know, folksy emphasis in his speech to do most of the communicating for him. Because when you read the transcripts dryly, it sounds like the man is babbling. Uh, it's only because of the in-person, you know, the, the, the folksy charisma of the public speaker that he's able to to use his vocal mannerisms to make it sound like he's not just a fucking idiot. I don't know. Basically, the man has a compulsive urge to babble, and that is never going to change. In the past, we have the Six of Pentacles. Uh, this is a power dynamic card. It's about uh, generosity and charity. Um, but more specifically, it, I think the impulse I get here is that uh, this is the, the desperate craving of, uh, of perhaps an addict. So it may be that he has had, um, you know, systems in place, people in place who have helped him to procure prescribed medications like Adderall. Um, and there were the implications there being that, that the people around him have helped to create a structure that supports his, his distorted functions but they are not able to create a structure that would be healthy for him, for the, for the nation, for the planet, 
No, that's way too much work. Okay. Anyway, what's going on here? King of Pentacles. He's the big dog. Um, this is the explicit ability to keep his shit together. Um, he is doing his very best to seem <sighs> competent. I don't know. He he likes to think that he's he's competent. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just an expression of the conscious effort to to be as concrete as possible. Let's let's pin him down so that his mind doesn't wander, so that he doesn't physically wander like he did uh, yesterday <laughs> after his his. Um, his gaggle with the reporters, he decided he was done uh, at taking questions. So he wandered off, having forgotten that his wife was waiting for him to the left of the group of reporters. So he wandered along the grass a little bit to the left and waited for him, her to meet him. And then they continued on to the helicopter. And um, yeah, I think he may have, have hit the stage in his in his age, in his mental capacity, where he tends to wander a lot. Um, and then strength, divine strength. Now that is a really interesting outcome. Hmm. Now for me, divine strength actually like refers to the core conviction, integrity, um, the, the, the core of strength that you can draw on when the circumstances overpower you. In terms of his lucidity, though, strength being the man wrestling the, sh the shark here, lucidity, the devil, ah, ah, okay. So it's a matter of willpower. He is still able to he is still able to lay claim to himself. He, he, I think he does phase in and out. This is traditionally the card where a person is offered one cup while gazing um, bored at, at three others, being offered something that you don't want. Um, so there, there could be that kind of um, vacant stare, you know, folks perhaps with with more pronounced dementia they can be they can be difficult to communicate with they can be difficult to please impossible to please because they're not communicating themselves where they, well they're not really clear on what they want and need people are trying to to cajole them to quiet them to suppress them very much toddler situation so he's petulant. The devil is in play, which is addiction, or at the very least, destructive patterns. And then the divine strength card. Relying only on the show of strength. He has only that facade left, maybe. All right, all right. What is it? Ah. He's still holding on. He's still holding on. He's able to... Hmm, he's able to get through the day. My theory is that he takes uppers during the day and then he has to take downers to get any sleep at night. Uh, keeping an eye on his Twitter, I'm sure you'd get an idea that he doesn't sleep for very many hours at all. I don't, I don't follow the man. Um, but you sure can't go on... Uh, go to any news source without being snacked with his, his tweets. Okay, okay. So this seems like an acknowledgement that he's very difficult to control, very, very difficult to please. So there, there is that um, surrealness. You know, he's not fully plugged in to his surroundings, not fully engaged and aware of the situation. So it's hard to get through to him. Um, you know, downcast, you know, um, walled off addiction and the reliance on, on just the simplicity of strength. The lowest vibration for this card would probably, yeah, just be brute force, would just be the bluster, the bravado. Yeah. 
yeah. So he will continue to be able to bluster through. He, you know, there is a chemical cocktail maybe in in play that is is helping him to sustain whatever pattern he's got in the moment. I think he'll be deteriorating further, but he will just keep on keeping on. So womp womp. Thank you for your time. Um, again, my name is Annie, and this is Holy Hell Hope. I do offer. Uh, private readings um, and also spiritual counseling or coaching sessions so you can contact me at holyhellhope at gmail.com uh, again thank you for this time and and if these these kinds of readings might be interesting to you please do uh, make that comment so that I know um, so that I know what y'all are interested in I'm not trying to, to, to bore your face off here so um, thank you again and and many blessings to you amen